Hey everybody, it's Matt McNeil. I'm in the garage dwelling another one of my Lost Boy Michael masks. I got two of these guys out uh, so far, which is great. This one happens to be auditioning uh, a wig at the moment, trying to find uh, uh, the perfect wig for these guys so that, um, uh, so that I can really recreate that Jason Patrick uh, 80s half perm, half mullet uh, look, uh, this one's actually not bad. I think, uh, I think this could work with a little bit of, uh, hairline action here, uh, and, uh, maybe a little extra, um, mulleting in the back, but we'll see. This may be the winner, but uh, I've got another one actually sitting on the front porch as I speak. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. But, uh, what I really wanted to talk about is making molds. Uh, I posted a few pictures of the mold that I made over the weekend and a lot of people sort of chimed in and had questions about what I was doing and sort of we commiserated about how we uh, get very nervous and sort of hate making uh, molds. And uh, there's certain things that I've learned over the summer, um, which I feel are kind of important uh, tips that uh, can help making um, these masks and these displays um, a little bit easier on the post-production side of things so that once... Once you've got your mold made um, uh, and when you're making the mold, how to make your life easier afterwards. And um, that one most important thing for guys like me who are dwelling your latex is uh, to be able to fill up your mold beyond the bib line of your mask in the front and the back. Um, when I made my uh, Bright Boy display and even my Evil Ed mask, um, I uh, really did not take that into account. So what would happen is when I would dwell a mask, um, I would have to come back out like every 15 minutes and either brush latex up onto the, the neck bib and in the back to make sure that I had an even coverage uh, for the mask to dwell. And it was kind of a, a pain. You know, my Siri uh, alarm was going off every 15 minutes saying, hey, you got to get out to the garage and brush a little more latex. Or what I would do is I would fill it like this. And if the mold and the bucket sort of situated uh, correctly, I would tilt it this way for 15 or 20 minutes and tilt it that way for 15, 20 minutes, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, so that it would create an acceptable skin for when I was dwelling. Well, for this particular mask, I decided I didn't want to have to deal with all of that. So uh, the difference that I did on this mask was I actually molded him beyond the line of the display, right? So what it allowed me to do is to fill this reservoir, the, the mask actually, up beyond uh, the back edge and the front edge. So what it would allow me to do is not have to come out here after... 15 or 20 minutes and, and have to babysit this thing. So, um, uh, those of you that are m making molds, if you take into account, particularly if you're using like an Ed head, like this guy over here, run your mold down to here, all the way across, make it flat all the way around so that when you do fill this thing in, that your latex actually, you know, stops somewhere about here and you can fill it up You'll lose a little latex, you know, dried latex here, but I mean, you know, it's this this thick all the way around. Who cares, right? Particularly if, it's, if it makes your life easier. So uh, that's one of the things that uh, I did on this particular mold that I'm very, very happy about. Um, so uh, hopefully that helps some of you guys. And, and then the other thing, the other tip that uh, I learned from you guys is that if you have bubbles like this, before I uh, cover it up and let it dwell, come in here and give it a little spritz of not stage blood, <laughs> but of uh, alcohol, 90% uh, alcohol. And what it'll do is it'll pop, it breaks the surface tension and it'll pop those bubbles and uh, then you won't have bubbles on the inside of your mask. Um, but again, you, I do that before I fill up the whole deal so that uh, the any surface bubbles are gone before I do fill it up and then, you know, I'll come back and spritz this so that I just don't have any bubbles. Uh, and then finally, um, I take a, Chipotle container <laughs> lid and I place it over this and then I take a trash bag and I cover up the whole shebang so that I don't get that skin that cr that uh, that's created across the top if you just let it dwell uh, open and uh, this this works amazingly so what I'll do is I'll let this dwell for about an hour and a half uh, I'll come out I'll drain it for 30 minutes I'll flip it back over and I will f uh, let it dry for about 35 or 40 minutes until um, 
until just the skin on the inside is dry. And then I'll go back one more time. I'll fill it up all the way again with latex. I'll dump that latex out. I'll let it dwell for 30 minutes and then uh, I'll let it dry overnight. And that gives me a nice thick blank that uh, holds its shape. Uh, in many cases, doesn't even need foam if, uh, if you get a blank or a, a, a finished display that's, um, that's not uh, foam filled. This one happens to be foam filled, but you can see that this one is uh, super thick. So anyway, that's, uh, that's how I'm doing it. Uh, if you've got any uh, tips or tricks or anything like that, post them below because uh, I'm here to learn too. All right, guys, hope everything's going well, and uh, we'll see how this one comes out.